So I've been working with fertility issues. Huh. And uh, I just want to know what the, what the resistance is that I'm holding on to because I'm ready to have a baby. I think I've been through like five miscarriages and a bunch of uh, IVF rounds and just a bunch. And I'm, I think I'm to the point where I'm like letting go enough that I can just live in this life that I have now, because I was just telling the ladies down there, I mean, I was on my way to a fashion show, crying, just like, why? Why can't I just be changing a diaper right now? Going to a fashion show, being excited about my life, and it's like, so I feel like 90% of me says, yeah, I'm ready, life is awesome, and there's this 10% that just is stuck, and I, I want to let it go, and here I am, and yeah, is that a question? Oh, no, it's a good enough issue. Yes, that you presented. Hi. Yeah, here we go. I can't believe I'm here with you. Hi. Ha. I know you probably get that every time. But... Your relationship with your mother is the reason. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That relationship has made it so that a great many aspects of you want nothing to do with motherhood. And unless those aspects are directly dealt with, that nothing will occur. Because they've, they've got the majority of it. And not only that, they've been fed with the resistance that you have to not getting pregnant. Yeah. Does that make sense? Totally. So they're like monsters in the basement. So dealing with those directly is how to do this. Okay. But I don't think it's a good idea to give up on it, personally. Yeah. Because I don't think you could, even if you tried. That's good news. Yeah, I don't think I'm, I'm not to the giving up point. I'm actually trying to be in the, like, moving on, where it's like, I can focus on the th other things in my life that I... Yeah, no. It's just distraction. I got it. You're yeah. looking at me like I'm crazy. You got that, like, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Lay it on me. Well, even as you were saying, you're like, I think I'm in that place where I'm ready to just, like, I understand that's a, that you want to do that for your own best interest, but that, those parts of you that want a kid, if they could voice themselves when you say those statements, they might as well kill you. Like, that's the degree of yeah. intensity there is there. So, would you like me to assist you by taking on the primary aspect that's preventing this? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Because in talking to me, Teal Swan is about to go bye-bye, okay? In talking to me, you'll be talking to the part of you that is resisting this. Okay. I'm scared. And I'm angry. And I don't want to do it again. And I'm, I'm just, like, really hopeless. About what? about failing again, I don't... I have no idea why you would ever want a kid. Say it again. I have no idea why you would ever want a child. Because they're amazing and fun and, and having the ability to carry on my legacy and, and would be amazing and I want to be a mom. Sorry, you guys. I, I'll keep it up here. Um, See, this is the problem. I have a completely different view of what parenting and childhood looks like than you do. When you say, oh, it's going to be so amazing, I'm like, no, it's not. It's going to be hours and hours of hell. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that. And I know I'm, that's the part that I'm excited about, like the hell. <laughs> Seriously. I know. You guys, all the parents in the room look at me like I'm nuts. But the people that don't have kids that want them want that. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I'm sitting there in the car, driving and going, God, I, I wish I was somewhere else right now, but I'm not. And 
I just want to be okay with where I'm at. I don't want that. I feel like this is just a strings attached relationship. I actually can't conceptualize of parenthood without strings attached. And the second that something starts feeding on me, I feel the same feeling I felt when I was little. That's what makes me get rid of it. Like, I always have to be perfect. When I was a kid, I don't think, yeah. I don't want to feel used. I don't want to feel used. I'm, I was the big sister, so I always was doing things for everyone else. That's what I feel like, so I don't want to do it anymore. That's what you're not getting. I don't want to do it anymore. So you keep telling me, let's do this. Let's take care of a baby. Let's make our life about the baby. I don't want that. That was my whole life. Yeah. I want freedom. So how do I get both? How do I create this life of, like, fullness and family and you know. it's not going to happen because I already know you because you're not going to let it happen you're going to make it so that you have to be perfect so let's say that I, I it's too much for me I don't want to have my entire life be dedicated to someone else anymore mm -hmm. you're going to say well you have to be because if we're not then we're not a good mother so like I'm not going to let it happen So how can I make you feel comfortable with it happening? Or, yeah. Yeah, I, like, I, from this part, I feel like it's impossible. There is no earthly way that you're gonna convince me that one day you're just gonna be okay with me doing a mediocre job, which is what you would judge me as if I did anything less than dedicate every minute of my life to someone. I feel stuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like this immense amount of sadness and fear and... Why do you want a kid so bad? I can't even relate to this. Why is this so important? Why can't I answer that? Because I want to. <laughs> That's not a good enough reason. I don't want to be alone. So you don't really want a kid, you just don't want to be alone? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I am. Um, this is what I'm saying. Like you, you're, you're basically saying you have to bite off all this crap in order to get what you want. I won't do it anymore. Like, and it's not just relative to babies, it's like a whole thing with you. I won't do it anymore. Because I have to be perfect at it? Yeah, you have to be perfect at everything, but it's not just that. It's like, well, in order to have belonging or in order to have closeness or not be alone, I have to dedicate my entire life to someone else, change diapers at 2 o'clock in the morning, make sure that I am doing that and my job at the same time. No. We're not gonna do it. No, because I promised myself years ago I would never do it again. Like, taking care of other people, I promised myself never again. I, that's the other thing too, I think, is like, I feel like I'm super selfish right now. Like, I've gone the other direction where I just, I just barely am like, wanting to. I don't feel like that's true. You don't? A person who's super selfish doesn't continue to remind themselves what a bad person they are because they're selfish. You're right, Teal. Um, you're right, and I, I, I have immense guilt. I just have this, like, my family needs me. I got to take care of my family. I got it, and so I guess that's just a continuation. I know you're, I got nothing. I got nothing. I feel like everything I, I'm going to say to myself is bullshit. And that's why I'm here, honestly. It's fucking bullshit. Well, then accept what I'm saying to you as your truth. Because this is why you don't have kids. And unless this changes, I'm not changing. 
the expectation of it to be perfect and not I feel like I don't know what else to say. Okay. <laughs> that was pretty interesting. What did you notice on a conscious level about that? What I noticed, I guess, is that I'm, I can't even feel that. I can't, I, I see it, I hear it, but it's so hard for me to f feel it. And it's so hard for me to be in that moment. Like, oh, I, don't, I don't even can, know how can to Can I tell you why? It. Please. Because you're terrified that if, and this goes for everyone, you're terrified that if you give that part of you airtime, you will never get what you want. Yeah. This is the single biggest reason that people don't do work with their resistant aspects. For example, in my position, I, it would be the terror of, I can't even admit to the aspect of me that doesn't want anything to do with being on stage today, because if I do that, I won't be on stage. Yeah. That's not how it works. I think that's really hard for me to see my um, shadows, because yeah. I've been trained not to feel my feelings for a long time. Because you've been trained that they're wrong. Yeah. Yes. This is why we are unconscious of them. Because the human ego is more attached to the way that we look to ourselves and other people than anything on earth. Yeah. So we are shooting ourselves in the foot, is what we're doing. How do I begin? What to if I told that? you that you will not ever conceive a child unless you do that? I hear you. Because that's literally what I'm saying. 100%. Are you willing to do that work? Yes. Okay, then here's my suggestion. You know that I've trained people in completion process, right? I would like it if you did completion process on, on this element of being sucked on and used, especially because when I was in that aspect of you, my God, it was like the rebellion. First, I felt 10,000 pounds of pressure. Yeah. Then it was like, fuck that pressure like angry, like violent anger. I, I heard it described as hot lava beds of anger once when yeah. I did a, a reading. Yes. And I, I, it's like I'm so not wanting to be angry that I don't even see him. And I like, know. My husband tells me, you're so angry. I'm like, I'm fucking not angry. Are you kidding me? Like, I'm happy. <laughs> and it's like, no, babe, you're being angry. I'm like, no, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. And so I'm slowly starting to like feel yeah. those feelings and get okay with them. And that's what I want you to be doing more of. So I would love it if you did the completion process, but I want you to pick a facilitator who's capable of doing parts work. Parts work. Parts work, okay. Because I, w I want you to be face to face with the aspect I was just in over and over and over until there starts to be some harmony because the relationship, did you guys notice the relationship between you and this aspect is like a really type of relationship. Yeah. And you're like, why are you doing this to me? And that person's like, what the fuck are you because even I, saying? Because you hate me. Of course. Yeah. That's when I was with my partner. I was like, all I could just Yeah, I actually did hate you. I did hate you yeah. as that part. Yes. Yeah. And so when you've got that going on in your own conscious, you know, consciousness, that is a huge issue. That doesn't just manifest as infertility issues as well. That affects Creation, everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. So I want you to be doing that, and that, that's like my basic request. Okay. But here's the thing. Before you go to the, the work of doing that, which extends beyond this stage, you have got to accept that this is a real and very valid part of you, the part that literally wants nothing to do with taking care of anyone ever again. But that's a very valid feeling and doesn't make you a self-centered person or a bitch. But here's the thing, when you grew up in families like you grew up in, that's what you would be told. If you don't take care of other people, that's what they tell you. So I have a hard time picking out what I want to eat sometimes mm -hmm. because literally it's like, oh no, that, you want that? No, it's like, that's not cheap, you gotta get this. So like my husband will ask me, what do you want to go out for dinner? I'm like, whatever, I don't care. But I do care, but I don't care. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm having a hard time figuring out what I actually believe. You, you do care, but you're not allowed to care. Yeah. You, you see what I mean? 
you want the things that you say you want, but you don't want the venue through which you get them. You're, you're living your life through transaction, and it's not going to work for that part. Because y you can convince yourself, no, I want to be changing diapers at 2 o'clock in the morning. You're never going to convince this part of that. And, and by raise of hands, how many of you as mothers found <laughs> this part of yourself when you were changing diapers at 2 o'clock in the morning? There is, trust me, it's going to happen. Like that part, if it's not dealt with beforehand and if you don't create strategies around it, will rear its head in parenthood and then you will literally live out your mother. I don't want to be her. Yeah, I know. But like, here's the thing, if you don't resolve the aspects within you that, that are the result of her and that are the representations of her, you are destined to be. You will have that moment where with your child, you are your mother. And I want to protect you from, I mean, your body's protecting you from that. It's not even letting <laughs> you get into it in the first place. But I want those resolved. They have to be directly addressed. Okay. So what I want from you today before we're really committing to doing that type of work is the acknowledgement. Part of you has no interest whatsoever in taking care of other people or ever being used again, and that's exactly what a relationship with a child is like for the first many years. Yeah. It's not like they nurse and say, oh my God, thank you. Right. I don't think they thank you until they're like 50. Sometimes. Depends how good the relationship was. <laughs> no more hiding behind I have to be a good person and so I can't have this be part of me. Does, does that make sense? Okay. It's, that, it's the mentality, I can't have this be part of me that makes it so that you can't move forward with these resistant aspects. I can't have the terrorist be part of me and so I'm now acting subconsciously and everyone else sees that you're a terrorist but you don't see it in yourself. Yeah. <laughs> But for you, it's, it's not the terrorist. It's the part of you that was an intensely enmeshed parentified child who wants nothing to do with that anymore. So, so here's how you're, and I need this resolved now because here's the thing, your, your parenting and, and the situation you set up for your parenting has got to include those parts. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, most of us in this generation were raised by mothers who took the opposite approach. Mothers who said, I have to be a certain kind of mother. And so they did it with resentment. And most of us grow up looking back going, I wish she wouldn't have even done it. And th that's I don't want to be that mom. But that's the track you're headed on. When, when is this part, you're unwilling to acknowledge the other part. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because for that part, for a part that's intensely enmeshed, this may be interesting for some of you fathers or mothers, if you're intensely enmeshed in your childhood and your whole life was about taking care of something else, you've got to set up a parenting scenario that doesn't make you feel like that again. Otherwise, it's just re-traumatization. Okay. But does that make sense to you in terms of practicality or not? No, yes, totally. How then? I want to know. Um, I am going to start being more uh, proactive on the things that I want to do and just making decisions based on how I feel instead of how everyone else feels is what I'm hearing. One thing I can do. Yes, but you don't get to bulldoze. Okay. Because this is what, did you guys see, hear that? Because you're either, from that step point, all you're doing is either bulldozing the part of you that wants to be a perfect mother or you're bulldozing the part of you that doesn't even want to be a mother. That's not how this goes. This is about finding a fusion between them and working through the resistance. So for example, you're gonna be the type of mother who says, if I don't make my child's, like every aspect of my child's food from scratch, then I'm a terrible mother. And if I'm not at every PTA conference, I'm a terrible mother. And if I'm not, you see what I mean? And then that other part's gonna say, I didn't want this. I didn't wanna even go there anyway. Yeah. So, so you can't live your life bulldozing one or the other. It's about, okay, so how do we work with the mentality around having to do this so it's not so rigid? Yeah. So that maybe you can be okay not showing up to every PTA conference or just going to two of them instead of five of them. Right. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. I really want you to do this work. Oh, I'm, it's an emergency. Yeah, it is actually. I mean, I, yeah. So I'm listening, I'm here, I'm, I am coachable. I believe you. Yeah. And for what it's worth, for 
from one to another, infertility is one of the worst things a person can go through. So, I get it. It makes you feel like your body's against you. Yeah, well. It is. Well, it's not actually, it's with you because you're, exactly. the other party is like, no, we're actually not going to do this exactly. right now. Exactly. It, yeah. It's like crazy. Before you get off stage, there is no such thing as self-sabotage. There is no such thing. And I, like, if you guys are here and this is your first time here and listening to this type of material, I want you to write that down on a big piece of paper and circle it. There is no such thing in this universe as self-sabotage. It is an impossibility. The things that you think are self-sabotaging are actually trying to save your life in the way that they know how. Are they mistaken about it? Usually. But I mean, can, can we say, given that you just saw that part of her, can we say that it's doing something wrong right now? No. It's protecting me from diapers at 2 a.m. because I don't want to do it. Exactly. So two parts of you disagree about what's going to keep you alive. This relationship is in conflict. Yes. You get it. I get it. I'm... Okay. Thank you.